cool. Hey guys, um, I may have mentioned in a previous video that I'm doing some renovation to my studio space. I guess you might have noticed the new gray walls, but I have not yet shared with you the thing that I am most excited about until right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the pegboard. So this is basically a giant pegboard on my wall, right above my desk. And the idea is basically to take all the clutter from my desk and around my space and stick it all on the wall, giving me more room for activities such as playing around in VR. As you can see, it's still pretty sparse and that's because I wanted to make it nice and big so that I can have lots of space to stick stuff up there for a long time to come. But rather than wait until I had everything up there and make one huge episode about it, I thought I would share with you a little quick Fusion 360 tutorial today on making two of my customized pegboard hangers. Specifically these ones right here. My computer mouse and my calipers. I think both of those utilize some non-obvious technologies to really make it easier for me to create perfectly fitting fixtures for those items. Two different scanning techniques. So I thought I would share with you just how I made those two today. And then maybe if I make other crazy pegs in the future, I'll make a video on those as well. Of course I'm gonna want ideas from you, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. First of all, let's take a look at how I made these things. To start, I had to design a way to connect everything to the pegboard. So I wanted a simple peg that can hold into the board firmly, but it was also easy enough to put in and out and it didn't destroy the pegboard when you were doing that. And in the end, this is the shape I came up with. It's got just enough flex so that it doesn't damage the board, but it also is the perfect tolerance so that it really fits in there. That little hook was actually my first design used to hold my rulers. And from there, I started doing more customized fixtures like this holder for my field recorder and next to that, some hooks for my lav mic. I also made custom fixtures for each of my hard drives. And in the far right corner, I made a little setup for my VR controllers, my headset, and the headphones so that I've got everything in one place right there. Designing all of these was pretty straightforward and I was able to measure most things with my calipers. But then this came up, a fairly basic shape but it's still kind of complex because it's got these angles making it pretty tough to really just measure with calipers. So I decided to try a new way to get this reference model into Fusion 360, and that is photogrammetry. So I created this simple setup in my kitchen and I used this Uhu putty to stick the mouse up vertically because the bottom part of the mouse is what I'm really concerned with for the fixture I'm building. Then using my DSLR, I went around and took several photos from every angle a few degrees apart and from different heights as well. As you can see, these shots are all really nice and clear and I used my manual settings so that things wouldn't change from one shot to the next. So I've got a good set of photos here, but how's that gonna help me design the holder for this mouse? Well, the trick is this software called Remake from Autodesk. And what Remake does is take all those photos and pretty much magically create a 3D model. For this to work, it's best to have as many photos as possible, but since I'm using the free version of Remake today, I can only have 50. So I'll delete the few that seem a little repetitive, and hopefully the remaining 50 will be enough to create a nice clean model. I'll turn on Auto Crop here, which will just clean it up automatically a little bit. Save that, and then wait for it to upload to the cloud and return a 3D model. And here's the result. As you can see, it's got those white horns sticking out, which is basically where there was sun reflecting off the mouse. I could have improved that with a polarized filter on my camera, but still the shape is generally good, and I think it's enough to get a good reference for my holder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the diagnostics here and try to delete all these weird bulgy parts and fix those up. My first pass worked okay, but there could still be a little more cleaning up here, so. I'll go ahead and delete again, and I'll use a flat fill this time. That seemed to do a better job. I'll also go ahead and delete all this extra stuff underneath my mouse, because all I really need is the mouse itself. 
Great, so now I'm ready to export the model and I'm gonna export it as an OBJ for Fusion 360. And while we do wanna work with a low poly model in the end, I'm gonna export it at high quality and then lower the quality later in Fusion so that I have a little more control over what's happening. So I'll save that out and switch over to Fusion 360 where I've already got the model open of my little peg that I designed. I'm gonna take that body, copy it and move it over one inch so that I have two pegs which are perfectly spaced for my pegboard which has the holes one inch apart. The next thing I'll do is go to insert and insert mesh where I can bring in my mouse model. I kind of want to roughly position that for now so I'll turn on the layout grid just so I have some straight lines to reference and then I'll go ahead and just rotate everything by eye here. All right, next we want to go up here to the file name, right click and turn off capture history so that we can edit this mesh a bit and reduce it. So now we have this mesh mode available and I can select that whole mesh, go to modify and reduce. Turning on the preview here will allow me to see what's happening to the model. So here it's pretty reduced and I think I can add a bit more detail. So I'll bring that up just a tiny bit. And there we go. That's a nice model with far fewer triangles. So it'll put a lot less strain on the software, but we still have a good sense of the shape of this mouse. I'll go ahead and turn on capture history again. You don't really want to leave that off. Otherwise you can't go back and change things later on in your design. Now I'm sketching on the back of this peg where I'm going to draw a few reference lines to help me scale up the mouse correctly, since obviously the proportion is way off right now. So I started off by drawing a line between those two pegs at symmetrical points. Then I'm going to create a vertical line at the midpoint, constrain this other line at the midpoint as well, and I'll scale this line to 61.7 millimeters, which is what I measured with my calipers on the actual mouse as the widest point. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this again, center it a little bit better, give it the right rotation. I'll hit S to give me this search bar, find the scale tool and select the mesh. Then I'll scale it about this midpoint that I found and just bring up the size until it's as close as possible to the width of that line that I created. Now, even though it was scaled up, you can see there's still a little mouse in there. I guess this was some glitch with Fusion and it kept shrinking the mouse back down again. So I had to turn off capture design history again, right click on that mesh and convert it to a B-Rep. That seems to fix any glitchiness. So I'll go ahead and turn on that design capture history one more time. Now I'll do a little bit more adjustment with the move tool again, kind of just getting the mouse into the correct general position. Okay, so this mouse is pretty much lined up at this XY plane. So I'm gonna create a section analysis there so I have a clear view of the bottom of the mouse. Then I'm gonna sketch on this right plane and draw out some lines that coincide with these segments of the mouse, these clear edges that clearly define three different sections. I'll also draw a line that's perpendicular to each of these which I'm going to use right now to create more planes lined up with these different angles. So once I have that sketch, I can close it out and I'll select this first perpendicular line and then I'll construct a plane along that path, making sure that the distance is set to zero. So it's perfectly lined up with that edge and I can go ahead and find that construction plane here in the browser and then go over to inspect and create another section analysis. As you can see, it's got the same angle and it opens up the mouse so that I have a nice clear view of that plane as well. I did the same thing for that third section and this part is a little rough because of the scan quality but it should be enough for reference. So now that I have those three planes I'm gonna open up the first cross section I created and sketch on the coinciding plane. So this first one is for the very bottom of the mouse and then I'm basically just tracing out a much cleaner version of this bottom section of the mouse. I'll hide that mouse model for now since it's got all those triangles and it keeps trying to make relations. Right now I just want to line it up with this center point that I created earlier. And I'm creating this center line that way I can just mirror this spline that I'm going to create for one half of this bottom section of the mouse. So I've got four points on that spline and with these top and bottom handles I want to give them a horizontal constraint. So just make sure that you don't select the endpoints but the handle itself, and you can also just right click and go down and hit horizontal. Now for the rest, I'll turn this back on and I'll hold command while I'm dragging these points. That way it doesn't create any unwanted relationships. It's just letting me kind of freely drag it into place. And I'm just eyeballing it and lining it up to that bottom section. 
And you know, you can see what's the bottom section based on the shading of that mesh. It's the lighter gray part where the lighting is hitting it directly. So I'm just gonna take my time and adjust that spline until it lines up as well as possible with that bottom shaded area. Once that looks good, I can use the mirror tool and I gotta make sure to only select that curved spline and then the center line for my mirror line. All right, so now I've got that blue line that outlines that bottom section. So now we'll switch to the next cross section and I'll also draw onto the next plane that I created, once again corresponding with that cross section. And on that section, I'll pretty much do the same thing, creating a spline but lining it up with this new outline where I cut the mouse mesh open. After that, we've got the final small cross section on the top and another plane for that as well. I'll do the very same thing. We've got that little chunk cut out, but I can still estimate it pretty well and when I mirror it over, it looks pretty good. Now I can turn all of these on and you can already see there's kind of a resemblance of that mouse, even though it's just three sketches. So the next thing we wanna do is loft all of these together, which is a tool that basically blends between these shapes. But in this case, it wasn't letting me just select the three profiles. So we gotta cancel it and go ahead and give the software some more information. So what we're gonna do is draw on this right plane and give it some rails to follow along. I'm gonna create some lines that go between these endpoints. And for the back here, I'm gonna use a spline since there's a little bit of a curve on the mouse itself. In fact, this top curve kind of continues around the top. So let me just make that one big spline and we can stop that once it looks good and go back into the loft, try that one more time. Well, okay, it at least connects those two. That's a start. Let's see what happens if I select the third. All right, it's creating a form now, but we still wanna use the rails to get a more accurate portrayal, but it's not working here because I guess you can't just have it be one single rail across the whole thing. So I'm gonna create another sketch on that same midplane and basically just trace out the same sections, but just one loft at a time. So I'm gonna draw on the right plane again and basically just trace that same cross section I created, but this time I'm just gonna sketch out the rails for one of these three sections at a time. So that's the back and the front here. And let's make sure that we're actually connecting between the two points. And all right, let's see what happens now if I try to loft between those top and bottom sections. That looks good, so we'll go ahead and use those rails now. And that first one works. Second one here, whoops, selected the wrong one. Let's just close all these extra sketches. There we go, so now the back, front, top and bottom all line up, but the left and right sides of this form here have a kind of weird curve as you can see by the highlights on this shape. So we still have to give it a little bit more information. So this time I'll sketch on this XZ plane and I'm gonna create straight lines between the two profiles of those same sections. I'll just draw a line on the side here at first and then I can select the loop as well as the endpoint and use the coincident constraint to connect those two. Then I'll go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. I'm also gonna go back into my previous sketch and delete that top loop since right now we just wanna focus on this one section. So let's go ahead and loft that. This time we've got two profiles and four rails. Hopefully that's enough. As you can see, those final two sides kind of bend things into shape, making it look much better. Still not perfect, but passable. So I'm just gonna speed through as I basically did the same thing for the bottom section. And the top was giving me a lot of trouble as well until I settled on just creating this little bottom section since that's all I really need for my holder. All right, I'm gonna sketch on this top section and just create a big circle so that I can extrude cut everything above it since we just wanna focus on the bottom section of the mouse where the holder is gonna be wrapped around. Now I'm gonna hide the two peg bodies for now and also all the other sketches just to clean things up. Then I'm gonna select this top face and then I'll use the shell tool to create a wall around the mouse. Two millimeters is good, but oh dear, Fusion is returning an error. So what can we do? Maybe if I just fillet these corners, it'll make things a little easier to shell. And let's try this one more time. Shell it outward, two millimeters. Hmm, still no luck. For whatever reason, shelling inward works, so I just accepted that inward shell 
and I'm going to do a little work around by scaling this up uniformly along this center point. And I'm actually just going to put my mouse here on the outward edge and scale up until the inward edge is now where that mouse is. So that should essentially turn that inward shell into an outward shell. It's super messy and ugly. If I was designing a commercial product, I would go back and do this the correct way. But for now, for this simple holder, it should be okay. All right, we've got the shell. So now I'm gonna use that same technique I used earlier, finding the midpoint of the pegs, as well as this body, and then using the point to point move feature to bring those together. And somewhere along the line, I also used the combined feature to join the pegs and the mouse body into a single shape. All right, so I don't really need the bottom of this mouse. I just wanna create a ring to hold onto the mouse itself. So I'm gonna create this rectangle that's 25 millimeters tall, and then I'll go ahead and extrude that, making sure I have the entire profile of the rectangle selected, and I'll change the operation to intersect so that only the things within this box remain. So that basically just cuts off the bottom of the mouse. I also embossed a little logo here, but we'll get to that in another tutorial video. I think we've gone over enough with this little mouse for now. So let's just save that body out as an STL and send it to the 3D printer. Here it is printed out. Always satisfying to see your 3D models become a physical feature. But when I put the mouse in there, it turned out that the holder was a little bit oversized. I guess I scaled it up a little too much after I did that shell command. So I went back in and scaled it down just a tiny bit and my second iteration was a much better fit. It's not perfect, but it still holds the mouse just fine, and you can see that the edges of the holder line up pretty nicely with the mouse itself. So it looks like a perfect fit from most angles. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that sucker onto my pegboard, and another step closer towards organization. Next up, the calipers, another oddly shaped product that could be kind of difficult to trace out. So this one I'm scanning as well, but I'm just gonna use an old school flatbed scanner since the calipers are mostly flat. Scan that in using some antiquated scanning software and you've got yourself a perfectly scaled photograph of your items. I'll bring that into Illustrator, create a new layer and lock that photograph. And then I'm just gonna use the pen tool to trace out the relevant parts of the caliper that I need to make my hanger. Basically just this top section. All right, that looks good. Let me just turn that into a solid shape. And since this is the back of the caliper, I actually need to transform this and do a reflect so it's flipped around. So we've got a pretty accurate representation here and I can just select it, export it as a DXF and make sure that the units are set to inches, the default in Fusion 360. Okay that, and we've got ourselves a file that we can bring into Fusion. So here is that same two peg setup that I used for the mouse holder, but this time instead of inserting a mesh, I'm gonna insert a DXF file. We'll bring in that caliper file, and while you can move things around in this import dialog, I prefer to just use the move copy command since it's a little easier to orient things. So I'll kind of just line that up into a decent position for now, and I'm gonna go ahead and edit this sketch. The first thing I'm gonna do here is use the offset tool since I wanna make this shape wider than the calipers itself. I'm making it 2.2 millimeters in every direction, the two millimeters for the walls that are gonna go around it, and then 0.2 just for tolerance, so it's not such a tight fit trying to get the calipers in there. I'll make the original outline a construction line, and I'm gonna draw some extra lines here as well to kind of dictate what I want my holder to look like. So I'll extrude that away from the pegs two millimeters, and for now we wanna make it a new body rather than joining with those pegs since it's not lined up perfectly. In fact, let's actually go ahead and line things up right now. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the mouse where I find the midpoint between these two pegs and then I'll also sketch on the caliper profile where I want that to be aligned with the midpoint. And I'm gonna use the midpoint of this bottom line actually and bring that up since that midpoint is kind of where the center of mass of the calipers are when they're hanging down. So I'll use point to point, move that over and now we've got things in the right place. Of course, that means that our sketch is now left in the wrong position and that's gonna bite me in the butt later, but that's what I did, so <laughs> let's go ahead and draw the walls next. I'm drawing on top of this back panel and I'll hit P to bring up the project command, which I can use to create reference lines of that back panel. 
I'll then offset that inward two millimeters, so negative two, and that's gonna give me the wall thickness. I'll add a few extra lines to close off the sections that I wanna use for the actual walls, since I don't need walls going all the way around. Basically, I just wanna extrude these two little parts, eight millimeters, and that's what's gonna hold up the calipers. Finally, we have to create another panel in front of these walls to keep the calipers from falling off the front. So I'm just gonna use project again and bring in all these lines. And then I'm offsetting these by five millimeters and creating segments again, which I will extrude to create that lip. I kind of regretted filling in this section. I made that a rectangular top just so that I would save myself some support material, but this is gonna be on my wall for me to stare at all the time. So I'd rather have the angles on the top here match the angles of my calipers. Since I had the sketch moved, I have to project that old sketch and then I can move these new reference lines into position so that they line up with my holder. Doing a little point to point action there. And then I'll create some more offset lines here, close off these little segments and then extrude cut those away. So you can see it now better matches the shape of the calipers that are gonna be hanging on it. A little extra work, but I think it'll look nice. Okay, that's the holder. That's it. We could stop here, export the STL, and use the built-in support feature in whatever slicer I'm gonna use. But if you guys know me, I'm not a big fan of those calculated supports, so I'm gonna make some manual supports. It just tends to have a cleaner outcome. I'm sketching on this plane that is the top here, but I'm printing this whole thing upside down. So this is actually gonna be the plane that is against the build surface of my printer. So I'll go ahead and use the project command again, and I'll project over the outlines of the shapes that need support. Then I can create a new body using the to object command and I'll give that a 0.2 millimeter offset away from my actual holder. So that creates a little tiny air gap so that my supports will hold up that really steep angle but it'll also be easy enough to just snap off and break away after the print is complete. I'm just gonna go around and do that for any area that needs support. Basically anything that's just floating in midair or any angles that are steeper than 45 degrees. Here I'm actually gonna do the 45 degree angles too, just so that we have larger support shapes versus a bunch of really tiny pillars that could knock over while it's printing. On this bottom plane again, we're gonna draw a couple circles connecting the corners of these different support pillars. Oh, at this point I almost forgot we gotta combine the peg with that caliper holder. So we'll turn those into a single shape. All right, that looks pretty good. Once again, we could export here, but I'm gonna do one more little final thing to save a tiny bit of material and make the support a little easier to remove. And that is to use the shell command on the supports themselves. I'm gonna do an inward shell with those 0.6 millimeters, which will create nice thin walls that are still sturdy enough. Although I did kind of mess up here, I don't want the bottom of the shell to be open, I want the top to be open like so. That way there's less contact with the caliper holder. To save these three bodies as a single STL, we'll just go up to the top level of the browser, right click on the file name, and select STL from the drop down menu. Here you can see the print finishing up, and as you can see the supports did their job just perfectly, leaving a very thin gap so that it's easy enough to break away, but holding up those really steep angles. Luckily, this design was a little easier than that mouse holder, so it was a nice, perfect fit right from the get-go. Oh, and it also works with my older set of calipers, which is nice. A little bit of time saving there. All right, guys, there you have it. Two different peg fixtures using some interesting techniques. As you saw, I used photogrammetry for that Wacom mouse. The scanning itself was so-so, but pretty good for my first try, I think and I was able to get a nice, well-fitting fixture. For the calipers, I used that old school flatbed scanner. Maybe old, but hey, it still works like a charm. So, I hope you guys liked that. Hope it was useful, and you could probably end up using those techniques far beyond something like this pegboard. So with this pegboard, like I said, I'm gonna stick all my stuff up on the wall here, but I was also thinking it would be cool to have some novelty or specialty pegs Maybe just some like charms that you can stick up, little logos or bands that I like or things like that. Add some personality to the board. There's tons of possibilities of what I could do with a pegboard like this. 
I could uh, make a marble track, you know, where you stick tracks in and watch the balls roll down. I could make, oh, you remember those old light brights where you stick the pegs in and they light up? That would be cool. I don't know, I'm guessing there's a lot of ideas. I'm gonna think of some, but I want you guys to think of some too. Leave them in the comments. As always, I love hearing your suggestions. So, that's my assignment for you guys. All right, that's all I've got for you. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Stay inspired. Ba-da-ba-ba. -ba -ba. Pegboard. <laughs>